Virtual Fighter 6 is finally officially coming in the future, and having played the VF5 Ultimate Showdown they released some years ago, it's fair to say I'm very hyped for this game. This franchise checks so many boxes for my taste. Cool, real-life martial arts representation, insanely deep yet grounded gameplay, some nice graphics, especially now with the Dragon Engine, and a good customization system. If you're a long-time viewer of this channel, you know that I spend a great amount of my gaming hours on these things. Also, as a Tekken player, it's very nice to see that another 3D fighter with this caliber will be back. And not just another one, it's from the franchise that started it all. Virtua Fighter is distinct from Tekken by featuring a more grounded, close combat, less combo heavy and more focus on the Yomi aspect of fighting games. The fights often look a bit more realistic and I think it's a good selling point for the game. Nothing against all the impactfulness and craziness in Tekken, I absolutely love that, but I think it's cool that exists another 3D fighter that is more realistic looking in this department. Now I have a bit of a controversial opinion. I usually like to enjoy things and not be miserable. And I believe that in our current times, the dynamics enabled by social media, coupled with our own frustrations and expectations coming from our own experience, can hurt a little our ability to simply enjoy a new game. I'll elaborate more on that. So, this is my plan to not just play VF6 when it's out, but to fully enjoy the experience coming as a Tekken player. 1. Knowing what to expect First things first, it's good to know the gameplay differences, so you don't set the wrong expectations. Tekken and VF, while looking similar, are very different in a deep level. First, in VF there's a simpler button scheme, with three buttons, punch, kick and guard. It still enables a great variety of attacks and throws, but it's still less than in Tekken. The attacks are also classified as highs, mids and lows. But the first difference a Tekken player would notice, in my opinion, is the movement. In VF, you don't have the benefit of things like Korean backdash because when you are moving, you are not blocking, even during a backdash. This makes turtling harder in VF, although I found you can backdash fairly fast actually, if you get the right timing. Just remember you never save while backdashing. On the other hand, sidestepping is significantly stronger than VF, as evading an attack with sidestepping is not based on your hitbox, but in the attack properties. So for instance, if the attack don't track to the left and you sidestep to that direction, you always evade it. This movement dynamics produce a type of gameplay more focused on the close range, where the two players are constantly making reads and interacting with each other. It is known that in Tekken 8 they buffed the side steps and nerfed back dashing a little, so it's more similar to VF in this aspect than Tekken 7, and people coming from Tekken 8 will have an easier time enjoying it. Also don't get the wrong idea by the lack of things like KBD, Virtual Fighters still have many advanced movement options, usually focused on the lateral movement. Another big difference in the two series is actually the throw system. Throws are not reactable in VF, and each character have at least a forward, neutral and back throw, each having its own dedicated command to break. You can auto guard for one of these three types of throws, but at the end, you have to make a hard read to break it. This, in conjunction to the fact that lows here aren't as, as scary as in Tekken, create another big difference. The mix-ups in VF are usually between the mids and throws, as opposed to mids and lows. But keep in mind that strikes are completely throw invincible on startup, so in VF, Throws are most used for punishing defense, not for frame trap mix-ups. Now that we have a rough idea of the gameplay, we will eventually have to choose a main character. The complex nature of fighting games, and especially the 3D ones like VF and Tekken, require a deeper connection with your character than in other types of games in my opinion. You will be grinding in matches and in training mode, looking at your character for months, even years, until you fully master it. So I always use the tried and tested method of just pick the one you find the coolest, design-wise and or gameplay-wise. This is enjoyment maxing here, guys. Vibing with your character's looks, moveset and gameplay is far more important for enjoyment in the long run than picking someone who is the strongest or easy to learn, in my opinion. At least for the majority of us who don't have our livelihoods attached to any more tournaments. I think that was part of the reason I couldn't enjoy my grind in Tekken 7 with Li Shaolan a character that's on the more difficult side, while being weaker than in Tekken 8 in my opinion. The guy is simply too cool not to learn his back two loops and just frames. You're gonna lose a lot in fighting games, so at least do it with style. 
In VF, I'm actually interested in playing Go Hinogami, cause grapplers usually have this archetype of being big and slow, so I think it's interesting to see a faster and lean fighter from Judo, an amazing grappling martial art that is not represented enough in fighting games in my opinion. Jean Kujo also looks cool. There's many more, and also, they will be crazy if they don't add Kiryu or at least some Yakuza character in it. It's bound to happen at this point in my opinion. Now the third and very important point for my sanity would be try to avoid social media as much as I can. But I know this is almost impossible nowadays. At least I'll keep in mind that opinions on the internet, especially in the FGC, seems to be functioning in this almost alternative reality, where everything is so hyperbolic, so dramatic, that your ability to form a more level-headed personal opinion about a game can be skilled by this overload of information and opinions, usually appealing to the negative side of things. For instance, any game that is highly praised after launch as some of the best games, suddenly, after some time, is now the worst thing ever developed when the honeymoon phase is over. After more time, the game is fine again. Of course, balanced patches help with that, but the core gameplay system, usually the source of most complaints, remains intact. Now I know that it is important to voice your negative opinions and concerns about the games, when it's really your opinion. It does help the dev things to make them better, but keep in mind I'm talking about a broad behavior pattern for the community here, not about individual concerns. The fact that I've seen this pattern repeat in practically every fighting game in this age of social media and online communities indicates me that this is part of a more complicated social phenomenon enabled by nowadays overconnectedness. In fact, Please tell me in the comments, do you happen to know a fighting game community where people are more chill and usually just play and enjoy the game? I'm genuinely interested in trying the game if it's the case. It looks like a complex phenomenon for sure, and obviously I cannot explain it fully, but there are some points I've observed that seem strongly connected to it. 1. Social media algorithms are favored with hyperbolic and negative opinions. As some recent studies found that negativity often leads to more engagement, it's natural to infer that the machine learning algorithms that run the recommendation systems that reward engagement and time span of the platforms would end up rewarding this type of content. So, more level-headed opinions would end up having less voice than overly negative and extreme ones. This trickle down to the type of content that is going to be produced, cause the system of incentives dictate that. This, coupled with the rise of parasocial relations, where influencers and some pro players' opinions are treated in a far higher regard, create this feedback loop, where strong negative opinions generate much more engagement, which end up making the online presence of people with these types of opinions bigger, which end up making these opinions appear even more in your timeline. I could go on and on about this, but it's not in the scope of the video. Also, there's one more point I'd like to bring. Two. There's a brutal nature of 1v1 competitive fighting games, where you basically have nowhere to go, you can't blame your loss on your teams, so people online often go vent out their frustrations on social media, so you often see takes fueled by anger that people just type in the heat of the moment. For instance, last time I've checked Twitter slash X, every character in every fighting game is absolutely broken. I know some people like to form opinions socially, always taking their peers in consideration, but I think sometimes it's nice to have some introspection and self-reflection, away from social media to form your own personal opinion from that when analyzing games, considering as an interactive experience or art form. Especially when you know that opinions on the internet can be influenced by personal frustrations along with the social dynamics I touched on. At least, that's what I'm going to do when writing my review of VF6. So this is it guys, I'm hyped for Virtua Fighter 6, and I just hope they don't take too long. I'll definitely play it when it's out and will try to enter with open-mindedness, knowing it's a different game and try not to be much entangled in the social media discourse. Now tell me, are you interested in VF? And also, if you like this video, please like and subscribe for more fighting game content. Bye!